morning, everyone. It is nice to see you this morning. For those of you watching online, we welcome you to this worship service. The first of 2022, and as several of us have talked this morning, we hope 2022 is not a little bit better, but a lot better than 2021. So greetings to all of you. Uh, as you came in, you were welcomed by a cup of coffee and uh, conversation. Offerings. I noticed the other day, I said to Blair, I said, where's our offering envelopes? She goes, they've been back ordered. So in the meantime, those of you that give online, you have nothing to worry about. For those of you who give by check, you have nothing to worry about. You can put it in an envelope if you'd like. For those of you that donate cash, put it in an envelope, put your name on it, we will give you the credit, but they're backward. For the first time in more than 30 years that Blair has been a part of this, they're backward. So, so, but thank you for your generosity. I think we finished the year on a positive note, financially. The masks, um, we all know someone or several someones who've been impacted by the coronavirus. Um, so again, if you have any kind of issues, wear, wear the mask. They're still saying that the, if you've had the shots, to get the booster shot is better. Uh, but let us all be careful and respectful of one another. Uh, mentioned the coffee and conversation between now and the Sunday school hour. Uh, stop by and uh, Kyle will have some coffee and cookies for you. And again, the offerings go to support the youth ministry. And speaking of the youth ministry, it will, they will not be meeting tonight. Uh, they are still in need of adult volunteers. So if you would feel so led, uh, please be sure to sign up. For those of you wishing to give to UMCOR, the tornado relief, and now I'm sure there will be an issue for the fires in Colorado and the other disasters that have gone on in not only in this country, but around the world. If you would like to donate to that, you can do two things. One, just in the market tornado relief, and UMCOR will figure out where it's needs to be spent. But if you wish to designate to either the fires or the tornadoes, you can also designate and it will get there. Again, 100% of that donation goes toward the ministry. Uh, our one great hour of sharing covers the administrative expenses. The NOW Committee will be meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30. Blair tells me there's a rather full agenda. So, those of you who have been faithful members, please be aware and come. And if there's anyone else that would be interested and serving on that committee, you are welcome. Pastor Lee's mother is turning uh, 90 years old on January 7th. Uh, and if you look inside your bulletin, there is an address for her if you would wish to send a card. And uh, for those of us that know Asina, it's hard to uh, believe that she's gonna be turning 80 years old uh, later in the month and again, her address is also there. Um, and then, okay. Uh, thank you to Kevin Webb, Jeff Beringer, and Milt for changing some of the light bulbs in our lights. Um, this morning uh, is communion. We have an opportunity to celebrate communion and look forward to that. Today, if you have been one of the persons that donated poinsettias, Please take them. Um, and even if you don't want them for your personal use, if you know a, a shut in, uh, please, please take them. And also on the memory tree, please take uh, an ornament there if, if you put one on the tree because next Saturday morning at 8.30, the decorations come down. So Kyle is looking for volunteers. And uh, so, Take the poinsettias, take the memory tree, and if you're available Saturday morning at 8.30, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, 
This morning, I understand Rosemary is still under the weather, so there's no choir, but the bell choir was scheduled to play anyway. Um, and the praise team, because of who knows whether it's COVID or just the flu or whatever, is not with us. So we have a different order of worship. And with that, unless there are other announcements, let us start our time of worship together with this unison prayer. O oh God, you made of one blood all nations, and by a star in the east revealed to all peoples, him whose name is Emmanuel. Enable us to know your presence with us, so that we proclaim his unsearchable riches, that all may come to his light and bow before the brightness of his rising, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as you are able, please stand and join in singing, Heart the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> in our hearts as we continue to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. May it not just be simply a remembrance, but it might be a renewal for each one of us as we once again welcome this, the Christ child into our hearts, into our lives, into our homes, into our friendships, in all the way we live our life. Lord, we do 
thank you and praise you. You are the God of the beginning, you're the God of the now, and the begotten, the God of whatever will be in the future. And we give you our thanks and our praise. This morning, Lord, we do come to you with heavy hearts as we remember those of our congregation and community as they mourn the loss of loved ones this past week. We pray for the Rose McGee family, for the Brad Regal family as his mom passed away, for the Burgess family as Father Jim passed away. Be with those families as they go through this time of transition, claiming the resurrection for their loved one, but also an awareness of their presence is no longer with us. We look forward to that day when we will be reunited with those who we've loved that have gone before us in the heavenly choir. Continue to pray for Beth Seidler. She undergoes treatment for Leroy Anderson, recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. For those that are in our nursing homes and assisted living, remembering especially Dave and Sue Akins, um, and we pray for the Kuiper family, David and Janet, their 44-year-old son, Aaron, passed away, leaving a wife behind and four daughters. Be with them as they go through this time of loss and this time of mourning, that they might feel your arms comforting them. We pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, whatever strain it might be. We know that it has become very frustrating that we all want it to just go away. We live in the belief that it will just go away, but in the meantime, we become very frustrated and impatient. So give us the patience, dear Lord, that we need that we can get through this, this era in our life. Lord, this morning we continue our prayers for Pastor Lee, that you would be with her and give her the strength and encouragement that she needs to be the pastor and the shepherd of this congregation. For this congregation to give us the vision and the strength that we need to be your witnesses in this community. And lastly, for each one of us, that you would reveal to us the role that you want each of each one of us. This morning, Lord, as we start this new year, we are privileged to celebrate the Holy Meal. May it be a time of remembrance. May it be a time of conviction. May it be a time that renews us in our commitment to be your hands and your feet in this community. Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all your blessings. Now, and forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen. The bell choir this morning is, uh, it's been a couple weeks, so we were a little rusty this morning, so please bear with us. But I think you will enjoy our song that we have selected for this morning. We pray that it might be an inspiration to you as part of our worship service.
bad for being a little rusty. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what a way to start the new year, right? Ring the bells. A little scary that it's 2022, isn't it? A little scary, but also, whoosh, right? Made it for another year. Our uh, scripture passage for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May God bless the reading and hearing of these holy words of Scripture. I'd invite you to uh, let us stand together and join in our Carol of preparation, we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5 of the first Noel. I invite you to stand. <laughs>
Hard to believe. And as we begin a new year, we tend to, to take a look back and, and sort of take stock of how the old one went. Although maybe this year we probably don't want to look too closely, do we? For some, maybe. For others, no. And we also, as we look back to see how last year went, we also tend to look ahead to the new year, wondering, you know, what's in store for us and, and pledging to improve ourselves. Hopefully we can all keep any New Year's resolutions that we have made for more than two days. Right? Two weeks? A while ago, I came across uh, a story that gave me an idea of a New Year's resolution that many of us probably need to make and keep. I know I do. The story uh, was about a, a teenager named Sean Sutcliffe who hated Sunday mornings. Sunday meant church, and that meant boredom. He said he felt boredom from the first note of the organ, and it steadily suffered on as worship went. The best part to him was driving out of the parking lot on the way to lunch. Much of what happened there just didn't seem important, he said. He sang a few old songs, read a few scriptures, listened to somebody talk for 30 minutes. How did any of that really worship God? The only thing that kept Sean's interest in church was the youth group. One Sunday evening, the group gathered at a nearby lake. They started a campfire, and somebody played soft guitar while everyone watched a spectacular sunset. Sean sat in silence, enjoying the, the sunset's reflection on the still lake until the last pink streak faded in the sky. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, he said. Carolyn McGee overheard him. She'd been sitting so quietly he hadn't noticed her. She asked him, do you think God hears us when we say things like that? Do you think God likes it when we enjoy a sunset? Yeah, Sean replied. Then suddenly something clicked for Sean about worship. Maybe part of worship is enjoying something God made. He, he said, to watch a sunset or, or a butterfly or the rain and to be thankful that God had such good taste. Am I right? The next time he worshiped at church, he looked around at the people. Many of their faces were the same expression of awe that Sean had felt at the lake. Maybe, maybe this feeling of wow is worship, he thought. It isn't the motions you go through. It's when you see or hear or remember things so good you have to catch your breath and then thank and praise God for them. Now I know that none of you feel the same way Sean did at the beginning of the story about, you know, coming to Sunday morning worship. You are all excited. You are so excited to be here every week that you can hardly contain yourself, right? Oh, come on. At least laugh at it. <laughs> you know, I, I actually have had someone uh, who uh, would run into the church because they wanted to beat me to get into church. So they ran into church. But I usually just tell people, why? And so people come into church and are so excited, they just run right in the front door. Of course, that was when I had a three-point charge, and it was kind of easy to beat me in the door. But I didn't tell him that. You know, we've, we've all had a few of those, those wow moments in our lives. Times when we've 
had to catch our breath because something was, was just so awesome. Times when we just had to give God praise. Some of those times may have even happened in church. But regardless of where they have happened, most of us would agree that it would be nice to have more than just a few of those wow moments in our lives. And the good news is that as believers in Jesus Christ, we can. We can have those moments every day. In fact, we can even have them on, uh, in church on Sunday morning. In today's gospel lesson, we read the familiar story of the wise men following the star in search of that newborn king so that they could, could go and worship him. We know they found him. They gave him expensive gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But did you ever stop to think about how they must have felt? They traveled a a great distance on camels. And well, you know, I am positive. I've only ridden a camel once, and it was for a very short distance and more for a photo op than anything else. But I'm pretty sure that riding a camel is not like riding in a Cadillac or, or a Rolls Royce or a Ford or even a Chevy. No, I'm not even a Chevy or a Chevy. Don't want to get mad at me. Wow. All this time, they were, they were just following the star. And after a while, they probably wondered if they were just on some wild goose chase. And just then, the star stopped over a simple little place in Bethlehem. Now they were really wondering if they were wasting their time. Why? Why would this newborn king be there? There was no mansion. There was no riches, no servants. They'd come so far. So they went inside just to see. And in the midst of this little place, they found a baby named Jesus. Think about what they must have been feeling. Wow is probably a good sign. They were so awestruck as they came into the presence of this special child that they immediately bowed down and worshipped him. When you stop and think about that image, it, it takes your breath away. And the key to this wow moment for the wise men and for us is the gift of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the greatest gift ever given. And he was given for to us. He was given for us a bunch of sinful human beings. If that doesn't give you a wow moment, I don't know what will. The gift of Jesus Christ is ours every day. This awesome gift is much more than, than a cute little baby. He's also the Jesus who suffered and died for us. He is also the Jesus who on the third day rose from the dead. This precious gift is ours. Even in the midst of our toughest days, this gift cannot be taken away from us. It is ours. If we believe. And as we give thanks and praise to God for the gift of Jesus, our eyes will be open to see more of those 
wow moments that surround us every day. The key to these wow moments is believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And for us as United Methodist Christians, that means renouncing our sins and professing our faith in Christ. It means remembering what Jesus did for each of us on the cross of Calvary. May we all forge into 20. 22. Remembering the gift of God in Jesus by serving Christ and by enjoying the gifts we are blessed with every day. Let us be sure that we give God thanks and praise. And may we constantly be filled with awe and wonder at the greatest gift of of all, the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. As we turn now to our time of Holy Communion, I want to remind you that this is a sacrament of remembrance. We are remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross. <coughs> and after all, isn't that why he came to earth? Was to redeem us by giving of his own life. So as we uh, go through our service of word and table, I ask that you be sure to take this time to truly remember the wow gift that we all have received in Jesus the Christ. So turn to uh, page 12 in your hymnal, or it will all be on the screen. Christ the Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church, and we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. said, 
Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. in Jesus Christ. A gift that should make you go, wow, every moment of your life. Because Jesus did this for you and for me.
May we always remember the gift that God gave to us. And may our hearts always respond with, wow, what a gift. What a gift. And may we appreciate all that the Lord has given to us as we worship, whether it be Sunday morning with other believers in the church, or sitting at our desk at work, or wherever we may find ourselves, even sitting in the school. May we worship what God has given to us. May we God worship Him and praise Him for what He has blessed us with. And that is the gift of Jesus Christ. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen. Let us stand and unite our hearts and voices in uh, number 254, verses 1 through 4 at this time of the three kings. Let us stand and sing.
by saying in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not overcome it. That light, that light <coughs> is Jesus Christ. That's the gift we have received from God. No one can take it away from us. It is with us always. It is always there for us. And God is always blessing us through it. So we do have many reasons to say, wow, and to worship and praise God every moment of our lives. And especially when we gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ to praise and worship God and to proclaim his word, to show his life and his love. So may we go into this this world in 2022 being bold and proclaiming the gift of God in Jesus Christ so that all the world may go wow and enjoy the blessings of God. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.